kind of falls through the cracks. So it's very important that you have proper caching in place, proper DB caching, or whatever cache that you it's appropriate to your use case. Okay, and the, the next principle is item potency and retry. So uh, some operations, uh, especially this must be very familiar for folks on the SOA world, some operations are naturally item potent. Right? So any, any type of read operation, right? So it's, it's naturally item potent. I call you 20 times for the same read. Uh, even if, I, if, I, if you fail to get a couple of my requests, that's fine. You can still read the data, give me back the same data as you read it the first time. Uh, but some operations are not, you know, naturally item potent. Uh, so, for example, uh, if a user is going through PayPal system and then tries to pay, but then imagine you are uh, you are you're going through a wireless network and then you're, you know, either through a cell phone or going through a train and then goes through a tunnel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, where you know the network characteristic is so bad, like uh, we end up getting multiple requests, or your your app thinks, okay. Uh, I haven't uh, called pay, so let me go. To, I'm going to call pay again. So that doesn't mean you end up uh, charging the credit card uh, multiple times, right? So you have to make sure certain operations, and these operations are really tricky sometimes, but then they are very core to your business as well. So if somebody calls pay for the same use case, uh, you should not charge their credit card multiple times or move money from their bank account multiple times. Uh, same thing with the cart example. Like if somebody is saying, "Okay, buy this," uh, you know, the app may not figure out that it is actually. You might have processed the request, but then you might end up getting the same request again. So you have to maintain some kind of state or some kind of unique characteristic to that message to make sure you know you are item potent. And same thing applies to retries as well. So uh, you know, people might retry multiple times. And item potency is something you just don't do it for your external folks as well. You have to make sure you do it for your internal folks as well. So, uh, you know, your internal clients, any client, right? So if they end up changing the state uh, in a way that's, uh, you know, that's critical, you probably have to make sure your operations are item potent. Uh, this has been a very hard learning for us. Uh, we did figure out certain, for certain type of use cases, uh, some pay operations were not item potent and, uh, it was really pain now to go through some of these. So, I mean, these are something you may not even realize unless you, you run your system through production, right? When you're going through uh, use cases that you don't run it on a QA system day in and day out. So it's probably like 80, 20, so 10 to 15% of the use case you don't even think, but then uh, they are like 100,000 of your use cases, right? So. Uh, so it's something you have to think through uh, uh, and make sure uh, it's, it's normal. It's it's not ingrained even with folks who are uh, who who are kind of very aware of uh, certain SOA principles that they do find it difficult to make sure item potency and retries are built into the system.